and welcome to the Enjirati studio. I'm Rose Bundock, Head of Commercial Content. I'm joined now by Santiago Bernales, Managing Director of Iberdrola Innovation Middle East. Welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me. Just last month, Iberdrola's opened its new innovation centre in Doha, Qatar. Uh, as a utility, you've invested 20 million euros in, in that project over the next seven years. What kind of technologies can we expect to see coming out of that? Center. Yes, we are uh, focusing on the digital applications in the energy system. So we are looking at digital technologies and how this is going to change the energy system. So in particular, we are looking into three applications. One is uh, smart networks. So this is about uh, smart metering, monitoring, automation of the low voltage and medium voltage network. Second thing is uh, integration of solar and storage into the network. And the, thir the third thing is energy efficiency. So we're focusing on these three key application areas. So, I mean, this is, as a concept, this is really quite interesting. A utility opens almost a consultancy service. And yeah. um, how will you be working with local utilities? Yes, we are doing uh, three main themes in this, uh, in this center. One is innovation, per se, with uh, local stakeholders. The second thing is advisory services, as you said. So we are helping other utilities to make decisions. And the third thing is energy services. So we are helping final customers also to apply these new technologies that we are developing. So the three things uh, we are doing. So for uh, other utilities, what we do is uh, we take advantage of all the experience of Iberdrola in deploying smart grids and integrating solar into the network, and we are helping them to make decisions and to deploy this, uh, this kind of technologies in the network. We're here in Turkey, um, which is obviously quite in the early stage of its smart metering yeah. journey. Iberdrola is yeah. quite a mature player now. Yeah. What kind of advice would you, would you give to Turkey? those DSOs? Okay, well, there are several advices that I could make. First one is that uh, you have to plan very well your program. It's very complex. For Iberdrola, it took 10 years to complete our project. So we started in 2007, and we are finalizing now, 2018, with 10 million meters installed, which has been a big success. But uh, it took 10 years to do things properly. So first thing is that uh, you need to plan very well. Second thing is that uh, you have to actually uh, take advantage of the learning curve of other players like us, because we have gone through the whole uh, process and there are several challenges, logi logistic challenges, uh, technology challenges, and really, you know, we can help a lot in order to make the right decisions at the right time. And the other things that I will, I will uh, focus on technologies that are open standards. It's very important to have open standards because this way you can reduce cost and you can reduce technology risk as well. And the last thing is that uh, this is not about technology only; it's about cultural change. So any company deploying this kind of technology has to change dramatically from a cultural perspective. So Iberdrola has changed from an organization perspective. The kind of people you hire, the kind of things you do, are completely different after you implement a digital program. So what I will say is that it goes much more beyond uh, smart metering, actually. So Iberdrola is looking at Turkey as a market, as you know, with potential. What's your impression of where they're at on, on that journey at the moment? Well, I think Turkey did a very good job at planning this, this, uh, this process. So I, I was hearing yesterday about the presentation of the roadmap for smart grids, and it's very well done. So I think that uh, you know, uh, they are doing the right thing, now they have to execute this plan. So I think the next uh, one year or two years will be key in order to select technologies, to do pilots, proof of concept, in such a way that you can deploy in a, you know, in a normal way within a one or two years. So I think the planning is good. Now it's a question of uh, executing this plan in, uh, in the right way. Just turning now um, back to innovation. Um, sure. As a utility, as a company, Iberdrola spends 246 million euros, yeah. or just last year alone, on yeah. R&D and innovation. Yes. What kind of technologies are you really championing at the moment? What do you see as the real solutions for the complexity of, of the grid? in the future. Yes. So let me say one, one thing about our model for innovation first, and then I will tell you about the technologies. Very important thing to understand is that we have a very open innovation model, which means that we do not de develop the, the technologies in-house and then apply them. What we do is we partner with universities, with technology centers, with suppliers. We have very strong relationship with suppliers in order to do technology development and product development. So that's, that's very important to understand because we focus again on this open innovation model. Now, in terms of what kind of technologies, we are touching every space of the uh, energy system. We have a lot of focus right now on the technologies that improve um, effectiveness and operational, operational efficiency of our, uh, for example, wind plants. So we can produce more energy you know, in the, with the same assets. And right now we're focus, uh, focusing also a lot on new business models, things like blockchain, things like a demand response, things like uh, 
electrical vehicle charging. So we are exploring a lot of new technologies that are changing the business model of, uh, of utilities. Can you tell us a bit more about the blockchain development? What kind of applications do you foresee? Well, blockchain yeah. is a way of, uh, of having peer-to-peer -peer trading in electricity systems. So we think there is a lot of potential on that to the extent that uh, there will be more distributed generation in the future. Okay? So this is very useful when you have several customers producing their own electricity and selling to other customers the, the energy that they don't use. Okay? So we see that uh, in the medium, medium long term will be very useful when there is more distributed generation, but there are technical challenges. For example, the, you have to be able to scale this technology. At the present, you can only do with very few, very few elements. So one challenge is to scale up because this consumes a lot of uh, computer, computer um, you know, use. So you really have to, to develop new technologies and develop in order to, to make it uh, possible to use in large scale, uh, large scale uh, systems. What so there is potential, but there are challenges. What about other emerging technologies like uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, mm. AI? W what's getting you most excited? The one that we are focusing more on is uh, big data and artificial intelligence. So one consequence of uh, digitalization the, uh, the energy system, so having more sensors and more information, is that you get a lot of information from, from the network, from the clients, from the environment. And you have to make sense of all this. So one thing key that we are doing is to develop big data platforms in order to identify ways of improving our operations, our networks, the way we interact with the clients as well. So for us, big data and artificial intelligence right now is one of the key things we are working on. Augmented reality and virtual reality, we are looking into them. Right now, we are using them more for training purposes. So in our training uh, campus in Madrid, we have uh, extensive use of uh, virtual reality and augmented reality in order to train people on how to use the energy system. So for now, it's more about training. We believe there are also potential for uh, improving operation and maintenance of energy assets thanks to virtual, virtual and augmented reality. But for now, more focus on training. Okay, so can we expect to see more of these innovation centers popping up around the world? Is oh, this that part I don't know. <laughs> you're not sure yet? For now, there are no plans for that. For okay. now, uh, we are consolidating what we are doing in the Middle East. Uh, there are a lot of things to do, to do here in this region. And uh, for now, there are no plans of doing more. But uh, who knows? <laughs> Interesting. Thank you, Santiago. You're Thank very you for joining welcome. us. Um, you. you can subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch plenty more of our videos.